I'll begin by identifying all board members present today. My name is Andy Lowell, Chairman of the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board. I see Peter Brace. Aye. Tom Sidlowski. Here. Ginger Andrews. Here. Dave Bossy. Here. Dan Pronk. Thanks for the phone call. I'm here. All right. Great. <laughs> This open meeting of the Harbor Shellfish Advi Advisory Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. The order, which you can find posted on the town's website, also allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting is convening by telephone conference, video conference via Zoom, app, Facebook Live, etc. as posted on the meeting agenda identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other participants may be able to see you and that to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. <clears throat> All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you, to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage with other members in discussion, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The first, uh, will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. <clears throat> Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Harbor and Shellfish Advisory Board, February 15th, 2022. Do we have approval of tonight's agenda, please? So moved, Mrs. Mr. Chairman, this is Ginger. Mr. Chairman, it's Tom, I second. All right, motion's been made to approve the agenda by Ms. Andrews, seconded by Mr. Sidlowski. All in favor, Mr. Brace. Aye. Mr. Bossy. Aye. Mr. Pronk. Aye. Thank you very much. Approval of the minutes, draft minutes from February 1st, 2022. Anybody have any revisions? Not seeing or hearing any, uh, I'll take a motion to, to approve the the minutes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. So moved. Uh, Ginger, I'll second that. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, the motion's been made to approve the draft minutes of February 1st by Mr. Sidlowski, seconded by Ms. Andrews. All in favor, Mr. Brace? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Pronk. Aye. Motion carries to approve the minutes. Uh, Mr. Brace, uh, is Mr. Franzuto not with us tonight? He is not. Thank you. Chairman's report, the Ted Lambrecht transfer recommendation letter for public hearing. Mr. Brace, is there, has it been put on the select board's agenda or do we have, uh, did they announce the public hearing? I have not heard back from Erica. Okay. But, you know, it, I mean, it, given the fact that she did bug me about it, you know, prior to our last meeting, mm -hmm. um, I would think that, you know, if it was going on the agenda anytime soon, it, they would have, if they, it would have to be a public hearing. So it has to be advertised. So that's three weeks of advertisements. Um, I, I would have thought that she'd, you know, I think she, she would let me know, but she hasn't yet. Right. 
board members have has anybody seen uh a public notice for a public hearing on this no i haven't seen it and i it wasn't on the past couple agendas so uh, I, but i haven't seen the public notice on all right thank you mr bossy i'd like to thank mr brace for posting the letter for upcoming uh election process and uh Mr. Sidlowski, if there's any way you can possibly stay, as you know, we'd love for you to still be with us. But totally respect uh, your uh, your commitments. So thank you. Thank Reed you. Depart I think I'm going to still uh, not not go on for the All right. Election. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Marine Department report. Do we have any re representation, Mr. Brace? No. Nope. Any board members like to comment on Marine Department? Any new news they'd like to share? Comments? I would just like to get Sheila to the meeting so we could hear what's up with the town pier. She says, I've heard it's going to be ready by um, um, the summer. Would love to hear about the damages and progress on the, you know, the concrete version of the floating <laughs> pier and all that. So I agree. And it, is she able to uh, obtain somebody at short notice to make the repairs? I don't know. Yeah. All right. I'm sure um, she'll show up whenever. I'll reach out for our next meeting. Natural resources. Do we have representation here yet? No. All right. Any questions or comments board members would like to make? Anything in particular, natural resources? I uh, had a question for Tara or whoever represents for our meet for this meeting or the next meeting just after uh having our at least second flooding issue tides coming over into the streets uh easy street washington street and whatnot i'm just i'm sad to see all the mulch that ends up washing out of landscaped areas and being shoveled up into the streets uh, out of the streets uh by the DPW and of course, lots of it also being washed into the harbor. Um, so I'm curious to know what, uh, what affects mulch uh, continually washing into harbor areas uh, such as Easy Street, uh, what type of effect they may have. So a question to note for natural resources. Board members, anything? Public comment? Marine and natural resources, not hearing or seeing any old business, excessive sand and scallops, dredging plan. I was happy to hear at the last meeting, Ms. Riley mentioned uh, something about some uh, sediment reports. Not quite sure if I'm wording that right, but Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, we see some progress made in this area and some collaboration with Coastal Resilience. Board members, discussion at all? Fertilizer ban articles? Any comments? I Anything don't know where the, I don't know where those stand. I don't know what when the next time the uh, FinCom reviews that. Mm -hmm. I know today FinCom had their hands full with um, the short-term rental articles. So, um, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman? I, Ms. Andrews, please. Well, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about the, um, the, the paradox of regulations, um, which is that uh, 
maybe the best way to start the conversation about fertilizer is not necessarily, as I as I've mentioned before, I think there'll be pushback, and uh, that a ban makes people who've always done things in a certain way it tends to make people upset. So um, I think it has to be a, a, a two uh, two part thing. One of which is the education, so that people have to see why it's important. The the why is going to be a very important uh, part of it. So um, that's uh, that's my thought for today. Thank you, Ginger, and and uh, I. Y- you couldn't be any more right. Uh, uh, people need to know why. I, I just got out of a meeting uh, with a branch off group from the Nantucket Shellfish Association. It's a public education uh, portion of the group. Emily Molden is chairing the group. Uh, and so they're working on uh, some more public outreach and education, especially about the health of the harbor. Their concerns are the same as ours. I've been appointed to this group uh, to share information from SHAB and, and with SHAB. And uh, uh be interesting to see. They have a very large membership and I think they could have a, 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 a large outreach, but uh, the why portion, I feel like for the most part, it's been proven in plenty of, plenty of uh, studies having been done and testing, but um, a good convincing approach would be helpful. So if board members have uh, any brainstorm ideas of, uh, of approaching and in a convincing manner, we have fertilizers as uh, on our agenda every every meeting, and we've got the article coming up at town meeting. I think it would be wise if we could, uh, you know, speak with people that we know and simply try to garner support. Board members, comments. I don't know. I don't know what else we can say. I mean, do we know we are, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Yes. My my thoughts on, you know, aren't we down to like two or three that we're allowed to use on the island? Am Am I correct in saying that? I don't know. Can anybody answer that? Mr. Jerry? Me? Mr. Sidlowski. My understanding is that um, there are regulations for commercial people, but the Marine Home Center can sell anything they want because we haven't set up a, a, a prohibition against it. So you can buy whatever whatever fertilizer you want. I can fertilize my yard with whatever I want and I can acquire it on the island. So, and, you can, and, 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 and a ban is the only way to go because if you put a regulation in, you need a whole system to monitor that and the priorities of the island aren't such that they're gonna spend the money monitoring fertilizer when they have all these other problems like how to do the 4th of July and other things. They don't have enough staffing to do that. Yeah. So yeah. unless you prohibit fertilizer nothing can happen you could have all the regulations you want and people just ignore them yeah but if you ban it there's still going to have to be enforcement well because I, I, cause if because if there's no if you can't buy it on the island but you're one of these people that has to have the green lawn and you're, you're just going to bring it here but it's you'll, like the, use, you'll it's have like a the, lot of people who aren't won't use it, Peter. I mean, you're probably right; there'll be violators. But but if you can't go to, if you want to get a culture of not fertilizing your yard, right? It, we have a regulation. We don't fertilize our yards. Sure, there are going to be 
a portion, but you'll lose a, you'll reduce the amount of fertilizer used by quite a bit. Oh, I agree. Your, I agree. Yeah. I just and I'm you're just, right that there'll always be stop laws. Yeah, and I don't know if anybody remembers, but you know, maybe five, six years ago, um, the guy who used to run the marine mammal stranding team, Scott Leonard, he, he successfully put through an article at town meeting that banned the sale of um, lighter than air balloons on the island because the balloons go up in the air, then they go down in the water, and then they um, tangle up in seals and seabirds and whatnot. And turtles. Um, and turtles. And I mean, it really it was a great thing, but you know, we still get all the balloons from the Cape. But, you know, we put out of business that one person who was selling them. But anybody who wanted balloons at events would just bring them here. They bring a tank for a wedding and, you know, so. Well, no, I, I, I agree that it would certainly cut down on how many people would use it. But I thought I thought there was already a ban on a lot of different ones. And I thought the Natural Resource Department was in charge of patrolling it for lack of better terms it, dan it wasn't a ban it was it was you have to as a commercial applicator yeah landscapers and gardeners you have yep. to take the the town's um fertilizer certification course which shows you how you know shows you the town regulation basically you can only use three pounds for a thousand square per 1,000 square feet. You can only apply it um, in certain times of the year, certainly not in the rainy season, so it doesn't all get washed into the water. And then you yeah, I get you. you take another course or a part of that course was to learn how to calibrate your spreader, stuff like that. But that only applied to commercial applicators. It didn't apply yeah. to you you and me, who, you know, just, you know, Joe homeowner wants to do it themselves. So I, there, there may have been some that were banned, but I don't think so. I think it was just, you know, um, how to properly apply it, I guess. Yeah, I gotcha. Mr. Chairman? Ms. Andrews, please. Uh, I, I think, uh, it, you know, nitrogen is nitrogen and phosphorus is phosphorus. And, um, you know, that they both, it doesn't, the source is kind of irrelevant really when, um, you know, it's it's the volume. It's not it's not so much this product versus that product, as I understand it. And I've heard that as well. Uh, if if minimal amounts were put on, the the lawn would consume consume it all. Uh, any other thoughts? Fertilizer ban articles. And also, you know, we ban fertilizer. Um, I guess I guess all this would get talked out in in the process, but okay, fine, we ban all the Scott's products, all everything. But then I remember Cormac saying at some meeting, can't remember where, maybe it was town meeting, that you know, the people that put, you know manure from various animals on their properties, they're actually putting much higher concentrations of, of nitrogen on the ground than what's in fertilizer. So if somebody, if, if we have a ban on commercial fertilizers, the more industrious in the group are gonna go to the horse farms and get horse poop and maybe chicken poop and whatever else. And um, Anyway, it's a it's a sticky, thorny issue that's going to take a while to work out if we get to that point. Are there are there any regulations on uh, on odors? Because if they if they move to using manure and it hasn't been dehydrated, uh, then uh, I I know there are stipulations in some towns, uh, rural towns up north, where uh, there are certain areas you can't spread manure on hay fields because of uh, certain neighboring uh, businesses that would be affected by that odor. Uh, it'd be interesting to know if there's already something on the books about uh, 
working with materials that emit foul odor. Um, but I'm not saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> the nitrogen and phosphorus and fish products maybe a little bit <laughs> i was thinking more about the the odor <laughs> yeah well you know that that you know when before lobster became a thing it became a, before it became a food that everybody craved <laughs> at least up in maine Lobster was caught and ground up and used as fertilizer because there were so many of them. Yep. They didn't even I, think, hey, we can eat this thing. You know? Right. We use it. We use our leftover lobsters. We bury them out in our garden. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And fish. Well, my, where my lobster traps are stacked in my yard right now, well, in one spot is my garden. And that's my best garden spot because all the stuff falls off the traps and goes into the ground. And yeah. then I rototill it all together. That's why I have such good tomato plants. <laughs> anyway right. any more discussion on fertilizer ban articles if not moving into health of harbors excessive lawn fertilizer use anything new or exciting anybody wants to add thinking of educational types of things if there was only a way to help convince people to use grasses <laughs> like clover and whatnot or just to uh change the direction of thinking on on the green lawn thinking what's the name of this subcommittee from the shellfish association is, that, is there a name for it yes uh i mean you don't have to come up with it i'm just wondering yes yeah, since, since we since they are on a similar um, tack th that we are, maybe we could arrange to have a joint meeting or at least invite them to our meeting and, and, and see where they're heading. And maybe they want to assign us things to do and we want to assign them and, mm -hmm. you know. All right. Well, um, Samantha Danette is uh, the new secretary I'm not quite sure she's she's organizing everything she's uh, a paid secretary for the shellfish association uh the subcommittee is called the nsa education committee and uh uh i need to get you sam's email address because she would like uh our agenda and minutes she'd love to be added to our list yes. Samantha Danette, D E N E T T E. I'll I'll get you her uh her contact information, Peter. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bossy. Isn't the um the Planning and Economic Development Commission starting to work on the legal aspect of this, similar to the Cape and the Vineyard? It sounded like that was starting to happen. Yes, I believe they meet once a month, and I think their meeting was February 8th. Uh, they have it on their agenda. I'm not sure how they will proceed with it, if they're willing to, to write a letter to continue uh, uh, advancement. Uh, I was not able to log on to that February 8th meeting, but uh, from what I've seen, uh, it's, it's really up to that board to, to, to make some advancement and a recommendation to, to the state to, for, for it to move forward. Right. That was my understanding and that I'm not sure how much good these uh, articles are going to do when there really is a commission or a board that's tasked with handling this and, and they're, they're addressing it so right oh uh here again um it seems like some education is needed uh uh i believe it's something that's really been on uh 
it was put on their radar years ago and simply not addressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it's 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 on their agenda again. Not sure when their March meeting is. I believe it's usually the third week. If you have a moment, Mr. Bossy, could you look up when they normally meet? And I'm looking uh, at that March, now, Mr. Chairman. Right. They're meeting Monday, March 21st. Okay. Um, the agenda for this uh, meeting uh, had uh, was articles of planning concerns. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was that was that was what they were going to discuss. Articles of planning concerns. Right. Interesting. Okay. And can you look back at at February eighth? That's the February eighth agenda. Oh, they haven't put out the next agenda yet. Okay, all right. Basically, they they don't have anything specific on their agenda. Okay, so the next meeting is is March twenty first. Right. right, and my guess would be they're discussing the fertilizer, but they don't say that. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you for that, Mr. Sidowski. Uh I can't express enough to all board members to keep an eye on this and uh, let's get our names up on their screen uh, so that they see that we're watching. If we have a moment, what time do they meet? Time of day? Looks like 5 p.m. Oh, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, March 21st. All right, mark your calendars, board members. Uh, and you have nope. to you have to register for the Zoom. Yes. And uh, you you register by emailing um, Megan Trudell, and there's a link. Okay. Great. Any other discussion, board members? Excessive lawn fertilizer use. Not seeing or hearing any. FDA shellfish taking. Prohibition in mooring fields. Something for... Yes, we're just waiting for... You know, we're waiting for Tara's final letter. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I mean, I read it and saw lots of things that needed to be added and I saw lots of things, lots of corrections. So I just sent her what I thought. And I assume that any of you guys read it and send her anything. I thought she was doing really well. So uh, we'll look forward to her, her, her revisions on that and seeing her next draft. Water quality testing. If there's nothing else for the FDA shellfish Any discussion on water quality testing? Any new news? Always curious if there's going to be any forward progress in Nantucket having its own water quality testing lab someday. Something the NSA worked very hard on getting some donors for. I think, Andy, this meeting with a lack of staff at the meeting, you know, it it underscores the need for staff to come and inform us. Yeah, we all we all have these item we have these items on here that are always on our agenda, and when the, once when the staff informs us on them, then we have a discussion and and we move forward. Yes, and I know that if if Tara's not here, she has a really good reason because she always lets us know. Yeah. If she can't be here and she sends a letter, so, um, yeah. Um, uh, I did speak with Tara recently, and I, I think uh, somebody is out, uh, and uh, she's. Uh, well, anyway, she's she's been busy there, and 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 somebody's out, so that she's kind of multitasking, but. Uh, um we've got school vacation week coming up shortly actually 
I believe it's the beginning of March uh, for Nantucket. The rest I think it begins. Of, Doesn't it begin next week? Uh, for for the rest of the state, but uh, Nantucket is, I believe, jumping ahead a week so that uh, uh, you know places of destination are less busy. Okay. Uh, they school voted to do that years ago to have an alternative week for the february break because every place people were going for vacation whether it's skiing or down to uh beaches down south uh every place they go is too busy and uh so so it's 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 the following week for nantucket i believe i looked at the calendar for that so the first week of March, and our our next meeting is March first. So uh, I believe that'll be school vacation week. For whatever correct, that's Mr. worth, Chairman. Mr. Sadowski. You are correct. School vacation week starts February twenty eighth. Okay. All right, running through March fifth, something like fourth. Okay, thank you. All right, moving forward to new business. Chris Fuller's video showing Wing via LJ in the harbor. Uh, boy, you know, this it really made the rounds, this video. Uh, I was happy to see it put out. Um, and I hope it doesn't uh, lose its popularity as fast as it came before us. Um, but... Uh, if anybody you know still has the link and pass this link on to other people, this should be part of uh, uh, like lawn fertilizer use discussion, sharing with friends and neighbors, and uh, any other type of educational program. Uh, I'll be suggesting this uh, with the educational board at NSA as well. I believe they've all seen it. Comments, discussion. Has, uh, yes. has, this, has the group, has the education group seen this on the NSA? Um, you know, it didn't come up. Uh, basically, this was the first meeting for the education group. Uh, uh, today at four o'clock, I cut out at 4.50. Uh, Basically, what they were doing was outlining some ideas about uh, uh, mostly events, getting involved at, at different events that are taking place uh, in the near future and through the summer. Um, so I'm making a note right now that uh, uh, that this video, uh, they mentioned an event that's coming up with the Mariah Mitchell in March and... Uh, it's such a short video, but uh, fun to watch. So uh, I'll be reaching back out to Samantha and Emily Molden. Um, I, 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 but I'm pretty sure at previous discussion at NSA, regular NSA meetings, that, that this video had been circulated th through the board. Andy, what about... Um maybe putting it on the Facebook there on like the Nantucket year round community. Not that I know how to do that stuff, but to get it out, you know, for more people to see it on the Island, I think social media would be a good outlet. Yes. Yes, it would. Yeah. God knows plenty of videos. We don't want to see come up. Thanks, Dan. That's a good idea. I'm adding that to my notes. Anybody else? Board members? On the link via algae video from Chris Fuller. Not seeing or hearing any. Coastal Resilience Advisory Board. Do we have an update at all, Mr. Brace? No, because we haven't met. Okay. Um, the next meeting is, I believe, the 22nd, but I'll be off island, so I won't. I won't be at that meeting. All right. Um, 
but it's possible you could get updated. Yeah, I can, I can watch the meeting for sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. Great. Great. Any public questions? Comment? Anything exciting? Anybody would like to add to our next meeting or recap of tonight's meeting? Not seeing or hearing any, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second, Mr. Chairman, this is Ginger. All right, thank you, Ginger. Peter beat you to the punch. So I'll take the uh, motion to adjourn from Mr. Sidlowski. Second by Mr. Brace to adjourn tonight's meeting. All in favor? Mr. Bossy. Aye. Mr. Pronk. Aye. Ms. Andrews. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Thank you all. Nice to see you all. See you all. Uh, yep. Springs on the way. Uh,